Welcome back to Killer Stories. I'm your host, Bobby Holmes. Sorry that I didn't have a new episode for you guys last week, but my mom was in town and it was nice to have some time to spend with my family. But I am back this week with my friend Lorraine. Say hi, Lorraine. Hello. (laughs) And if you are a return listener, you have heard the episode that I featured of Once Upon a Nightmare a few weeks back. And you've been doing that podcast for over a year now, right? July, 2020. Yeah. So going on too then. Mm. Um, And that was both, or I'm sorry, that was based um, originally you did true crime and horror films, and Mm. then it kind of morphed into recently covering more true crime related films. Yeah. Horror films based on true crime. I just kind of just do what I want. (laughs) Yeah. And speaking of what you want, you've got a new project, right? Yeah. I, um, I, I just, I've been toying with the idea of doing a true crime podcast since I started it in 2020, Mm -hmm. but I was like, I can't do that. I can't do that. So I did both. And then like my kid was away all last week and I just thought I'm going to do it. I've got the time this week. Didn't have hardly any work on. So I just sat down and just basically spent five days researching and writing yeah like crazy and oh. I really enjoyed it so if enjoy is the right word but yeah yes so mm-hmm. what is the name of your new it's podcast and going when to, can we it's gonna be May 4th I'm aiming to okay. release it and it's gonna be called American murder stories I was gonna say horror stories then All right um, I American... know I was like are you going to um do AMS like AHS for American horror stories yeah. yeah I am I am <laughs> Um, my husband cool. actually came up with the name because I was chatting to a fellow podcaster who comes on your show a lot from British Murders and he was like go niche go niche and I was like well I've already written some stuff loads of stuff on it in America so he goes go American so then Dev there came up know. with that so I'm doing like north central I'm doing basically all of it north central south America because one yeah. of the episodes was on a guy from south America so I was like well I've done the north and a south and I'm not getting rid of those <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. no so um broad yeah. broad spectrum that's what mine's like I just do wherever yeah so I just really Whenever floats my boat <laughs> it's just I've been into it since the 80s like I started getting into it in the mid 80s you know what I mean so early 80s I don't know what age I was I was very young but um <laughs> always been into it always been into sure. it yeah so I thought yeah. do you know what it's about it's been nearly 40 years it's about time <laughs> And we will give you a little taste of that podcast because today Lorraine is telling the story and I know nothing about, I don't even remember who you told me you're covering, literally clueless. So I can't wait. <laughs> but this is show you, cause I actually went back and looked and I wrote this because I've been thinking about doing the true crime stuff. Um, on the 29th of November last year, mm-hmm. I remember one day just going, I need to write something. <laughs> I just started writing yeah. it, but it's not an um, American case. It's actually European. So it's set in uh, Germany and it's the Hinterkaifeck murders. Okay. Now they are super duper old and they were basically a hundred years old today, uh, this year on March 31st. So quite a while ago and they are unsolved. Unsolved. I love a good unsolved. I I like to like theorize and no, you don't. No, I ain't got the patience for it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I just don't have well, the patience for it. Here so, we go. <laughs> yeah. So this took place in a tiny little village called Kaifect, which is located between um, the towns of, sorry, my German is not up to speed here, Ingolstadt, <laughs> actually. Aren't you German? I mean, technically my yeah. heritage is, I can't speak it. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> Ingolstadt and Schroden Heisend, which is about 50 miles uh, from Munich, and basically, it's a whole family known as the Gruber family. The dad is Andreas, who's 63. The mother is Kazilla, 72. They had a daughter live with them who was widowed. She's Victoria. She was 35. And she had children, Kazilla, seven, and Joseph, two, and also a maid that worked there, Maria, 44. They would all be the ones that were victims of this mm. murder that basically happened, you know, in like one setting. And um, it, the doctor that performed all the autopsy says that they basically would have been killed, he thinks anyway, by a mattock. I didn't know what a mattock was. I don't know what it it's is. It's like a think. pickaxe. Okay. So that would have been um, pretty brutal. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. yeah. 
So the, the, the farm they lived on was very isolated and they pretty much kept to themselves. Um, no one, basically they said, if you didn't know about the farm, you would never know about it apart from a few locals. And it was only noticed that something may be wrong because the little girl, Casilla didn't go to school. Victoria didn't show up for choir practice and their mail wasn't being picked up. So people kind of started getting suspicious what's going on. And this local farmer called Lorenz Schlittenbauer. <laughs> hey, that sounds good. <laughs> I know. He decided to go and investigate um, a few days later on April the 4th of that year. And this is when he discovered it. The gruesome mm. scene of them all being murdered. Do you know what kind of farmers they were or what they were farming? No, they had animals. They just had like okay. ca- cattle. I was trying to think yeah. of the word okay. there. Cattle. Yeah, so they they had um, cattle and they said there was nothing like remarkable about this place. And um, there was lots of other farms uh, and it was located by a forest called Witch's Wood. Ooh. And um, spooky. Yeah. And it was basically one building and like there were a few windows um, and an attic. And the attic apparently was just like completely open at the top. So it was like divided into little rooms and stuff down in the main building, mm-hmm. but the attic didn't have any division in it it was just like the attic basically covered massive space okay the, the entire house um the house was a place the farm was a place of status at some point it was used as like a dowry um by the original owner john johan ashram so he had a son called joseph and he married casilla and she lived so this is the the woman that died the the, the wife that died and she lived in the farm and um, so they kind of had this weird thing. So Joseph received the deeds to the property because he married her. And then he died eight years later. So she then was a widow and got left this building. So then she married. But because she married, it then became joint to Andreas. Right. Okay. So it's just like, you know, it's like an automatic thing. So he gotcha. basically just moved in and uh, she did have children from her first marriage uh three of them died um and she did then have a son martin he was killed in the battle of somme back in i was gonna say three of them died outside yeah. of this murder yeah yeah this is yeah something yeah in a different have, way <laughs> yeah and her, yeah she had four children three of them died yeah um and wow. yeah then she went on to marry this guy andreas and they had three children and only one would survive into adulthood this Man. is before again. not very good statistics no i know survival back then huh no it, it it wasn't like so they they had this daughter uh victoria was the one that i i mentioned and you know they said she seemed like a happy child but there also could be a lot of noises of people of crying so the children that died apparently they were very underweight you know starvation neglect so it sounds like they basically just starved to death mm. And then if that isn't bad enough before being brutally murdered with your whole family. There was a lot of um, conversation and rumors about the fact that Victoria was being molested by her father. Stepdad then. Or no, no, this is her dad. Yeah. Dad. Yeah. So this is 1887. Oh. born. Yeah. Because um, that's what I thought. I thought, was that her stepdad? Not that it makes it any less wrong no, for it to be no, a stepdad, exactly. but like still <laughs> mm. ew. Yeah, exactly. No, I know it's disgusting. So like he because like there there was because I was thinking of doing this for based on true crime for my podcast. Mm-hmm. But the only version you could get of the film, a film called Tannoid from 2009, and it had German subtitles. And I couldn't get it with the English subtitles, but I did try and watch we it. We don't do I, subtitles very well, do we? Remember the ring? They need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They at least need to be English subtitles. So, but I yeah. watched a bit of it to try and get the gist of it. And they show the scene of him doing stuff. And it's, I, I, I was glad I couldn't watch it, I'll be honest with you, because obviously um, nobody wants to see that. So Victoria would stay at the farm. She had been made a widow, obviously, and she would stay at the farm with him and help him basically run it. And um, then obviously the rumors between the daughter would get stronger and stronger. And she then had a child who everyone. The daughter had a child. The daughter had a child. How old Uh, is she at this point? Do you know? 
Well, she died at 35, so she would have been in her late 20s. Okay. Because the boy, um, Joseph, was, um, I think he was two or five. But he was basically, you know, she was she was still quite young. She was still in her late 20s, early 30s. And um, so, yeah, he started, you know, messing with her. But there was also rumours, the local, so the farmer that I mentioned at the start, Lorenz Schlittenbanger, Banger, oh, Bauer, <laughs> Jesus, sorry, Freudian slip there. Um, it was also rumoured that that child was potentially his because they kind of had a little thing going on. Okay. Um, so they plan to get married, uh, Lorenz and thing, but the dad wasn't having it. Andre, I know it's very... So I'm like trying to do it all in my head. Oh, like, mate, Lorenz. I know. It's, 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 it's ridiculous <laughs> because basically, so he's... We need a family tree right now. <laughs> well, you'd, you'd think, I know this sounds weird, but you'd think if you had molested your child and had a child, a, a kid with her, but you had a chance to kind of pass this off as another guys that she was seeing who was you know someone she could see you think you kind of go along with it you know but he doesn't think. He, yeah but he doesn't well, oh, he wants it to be his child well he doesn't want anyone else to kind of have her so it's probably a okay. control thing but then they try and get um like Lorenz kinds of works out that this isn't his kid but they still try and get money off of him to pay for it but gotcha. he's not having it. And then he goes away and he gets into a relationship with someone else, has a, gets married, and the wife um, has a baby, and then that baby dies. <laughs> I know. You sh- I wow. Know. I know. Like, I know. At, do we know, like, at birth death? I feel like a lot it's of times, a, you know, like the later. baby and the, and the mom weeks. would die before, um, you know, like the convenience of a hospital and... <laughs> Hmm. giving birth, you know, in a, in a safe space where they can save you when something goes wrong. People just had their babies at home then I feel like, right? Well, exactly. It's, it doesn't exactly have the medical attention that we would have today. Mm-hmm. And you kind of have your baby, then you don't get your, you know, like we do your nine months maternity leave. Mm-hmm. I know you no. guys don't get nine get months. Well, I took a year. Holy shit. <laughs> I got, I got paid for, do nine you know, of it. okay. I got paid for zero of it. Yeah, and I, I only took seven weeks. Yeah, America's weeks. weird when it comes to um, maternity leave, isn't it? Wow. A yeah. year. That would yeah. be nice. I, I took a year and then I went back for a few months and left. <laughs> 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 so I did. But yeah, yeah, we, we definitely get. But I don't Thanks think... for the paid maternity leave. <laughs> mm, exactly, exactly. Um, so because they were trying to harass him for money, he did make a complaint about it and he did speak about the incest, but he ended up dropping the charges, but they don't know why. And then, be, then after that, Andreas then came forward and he was like, basically I, he became the parent of this young boy. And Lorenz did give statements basically <clears throat> saying, you know, that he knew that Gruber was having sexual intercourse with his daughter because she had also told him about this. And like how she hated it and she didn't want him near or anything, but, you know, she couldn't stop it. And when they were thinking about getting married, one of the things was, I will marry you, but only if you stop, you know, your dad stops doing that. And he was (laughs) like, only if you stop having sex with your dad or your dad stops having sex with you. Apparently he just turned around and went, we'll see. (laughs) You know, what the fuck? Like, you know what I mean? Well, I doubt, like I said, I shouldn't have worded it like stop having sex with your dad because it doesn't sound like she was a willing participant there. No, she definitely wasn't. But this this next thing I find really strange. So he wasn't the only one to comment on it to the authorities. A maid caught them having sex. At, well, no, I'm not going to say caught them having sex, caught him raping her. Let's let's call right. it what it is. Yeah. And they both got jail time because incest is illegal. <laughs> yeah exactly now she did got they on... know what rape was then <laughs> exactly she, she but yeah exactly like she she got a month and he got a year but she still got time for it even though it wasn't attention that she wanted like she she didn't want him to do this but yet she still she still got time for it and I, I don't understand that I mean obviously I, I didn't start going into the whole law you know behind it in Germany and stuff like that but I presume 
I'd like to think that that's changed. I would hope I so. it has. I'd say it has. <laughs> yeah. It's not 2022, of course it has. Right. But he, he himself, Andreas himself, he wasn't a very well-liked person in general in the village. Like, nobody liked him. He was very quick to temper. So overall, this guy sounds like the biggest piece of shit. And apparently he beat his wife. So he's raping his daughter. He's beating his wife. And everyone thinks he's a dick. You know? Sounds so, like it. Yeah. So um, people would... So things basically started happening back at the um, the farm. So people were noticing noises and like footprints in the snow and just just noises from the attic like scraping it almost sounded like there was people up there but they never saw anyone up there so this went on for ages and there was this maid there called, before the maid that died another maid worked there called crescents and she would constantly be saying to people i'm hearing things and there's a movement and it, like i said every time they checked it wasn't there and but no one would listen to her, but she was so adamant about it. And, you know, people would then approach him about it. Like, look, what's going on? We can hear all these noises. And he's like, look, there's no one up there. Now, when he had a few drinks, he liked to talk about it. But before that, it was just basically, you know, when, you know, the way sometimes in old buildings, especially like you hear creaking and noises like that. For sure. But yeah. he did say that there was footprints in the snow that didn't belong to any of the family. There was locks broken. And so at this time, the family is yeah. all yeah. out and about working the farm, going to school, all that stuff. Yeah. So they're doing all that stuff, but there is things that don't seem right. But I think some things you can kind of put down to, well, maybe it was them. Maybe there's just a rat up there. I don't know. You know, you can kind of put right. things down to the building location and all that kind of stuff. But unfortunately, um, this would not be the case because they do think that there was actually someone or people actually living in the attic and these were potentially living or being held in the it's, attic it sounded, <laughs> yeah no it sounded like um it sounded like living okay from what they said because they said they went upstairs and there was like stuff in there like feces hmm. as you do like newspapers and stuff like that so um go. <laughs> yeah exactly so we had this woman she she left this maid left and then another woman maria who was unfortunately the woman that died she went to work there and it would be her first day working there and that her sister brought her up because she was a bit nervous to go up her sister brought her up and that would be the last time that she first day of work first day of work and that thing. was the last time that they were ever seen again. Now, the problem with this story is because it's unknown, like the killer is unknown and they're kind of just working this out. It's like, this is what they're saying they think happened, kind of, I think, rather than obviously being 100% set in stone. Not that you can always believe a killer when they tell you what is going on. Right. So the deaths, as I said, a matic was used. So they were really quite brutal in force and they were... The, the, the individuals were led one by one to a barn apart from the baby and the maid. So they were led one by one to the barn and murdered. But the other two, uh, Joseph was in his car and um, the, the maid was killed in the house. This and is sounding a little familiar now <laughs> that you started going off. I'm like, maybe I have heard this before. So they were taken somewhere. Most of them were taken to the barn, you said. And yeah, they were, they were killed. They were taken to the barn, yeah, uh, one by one. And they're saying that basically they were taken to the barn and just, just like killed, like quickly apart. So to the head? The head, yeah. And they, nice. they're not sure if it was an individual or a group of people, but they, um, they believe that these people were struck on the head multiple times by this pickaxe or mattock. And Oof. while they do think they all died really quickly, they don't think this was the case for Kazilla, the young girl, because they're, she basically had a wound to the head, shattered jaw, jaw and neck. But they think she was alive for quite a few hours because when they found her, she had been pulling her hair out. Mm. So she was obviously in a lot of pain. So she's lying in the straw and she's yanking her hair out. Oh, so she probably thing. had it in her. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the elder one, she had cracks to her skulls. And they also think she was uh, strangled the uh the the mother the casilla the elder casilla and um 
Andreas had his skin shredded on his face that resulted in his cheekbones being exposed and Victoria was the same sculpted head. So while they're saying it looks like it was a bit easier for all of them, apart from Kazilla, I think if your skin is shredded on your face and you, you know, that's. Was the murder weapon found? Was it left there? Or they just think that's what they created said it's those. Believed. So, so the doctor did an autopsy mm-hmm. and he thinks that. And that's just what he thinks they used. He thinks they used. Now. Okay. They, of course, try and go for a motive. So they're going to start looking at people as to who did this. And there doesn't appear to be any sort of motive. Now, the first one they go for is robbery. But there was a large sum of money within the home. And the police said that had they been looking for it, they would have found it. There was nothing there to suggest that they were there to rob the place. And... um, Then another strange thing is they weren't found until the 4th. But in those few days, people saw smoke coming from the chimney, food had been eaten, and the cattle had been fed and watered. So whoever did it was hanging out and living there afterwards. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They, um, They stayed there. They obviously cared for the animals. They had something to eat. And because obviously they lived in a remote place and no one really bothered with them, it was easy to kind of take that few days before people started noticing that someone hadn't turned up for school, the choir, and they picked up their post. So Andreas is the rapist father. Yeah. So he was killed as well. Yeah, can't, they were all killed. Can't pin it on him. No, <laughs> no I know. I know. Because, you, you know, I know you could think of... Oh, it's always the husband. Well, they, they tried to kind of say maybe it was someone did it and then killed themselves, but they said that the wounds that were inflicted, there's no way that they could have done it themselves. Like hit yourself in the back of the head yeah. with a pickaxe. I think they can weird. tell, I don't know, if, I, obviously I don't know what forensics were like back then, but I think obviously, like, because you can tell when someone shoots, you know, and hits, I know it wasn't a gun, but they say they can tell, can't they? That the direction, yeah. Yeah, exactly, sure. exactly. Now, the people that were questioned, so you you obviously, while there has been no one that's been found, there were obviously suspicions. First one being Lorenz uh, Schittelbauer. So the guy who found them, the guy who had a history of a relationship with Victoria, the guy who they tried to make pay um, child support mm. for a kid that wasn't his, the man who whose wife had a baby and the baby died. So there's all these things that kind of pointed towards him, but no matter what they did or said to him, they just couldn't, you know, but also they said that he acted very strange around the dead bodies and stuff like that. It's like, apparently he wasn't really phased by any of it. It didn't show any signs of distress. So they kind of, you know, which I know is a big thing. They they pay attention to how people act, don't they? And they just just yeah. they, they said basically like, this guy screamed it, screamed the, it, killer. The, oh yeah, because the normal person seeing people brutally hmm. murdered would would feel sick to their stomach <laughs> at the very least. Well, exactly, especially if there's a woman there that you you know you knew yes. the situation with Victoria wasn't you know that she was just this horrible woman. I mean, she was in one of the worst situations a a woman can be in. So, you know, it's not like she was just horrible to him and just left. It was a situation with her dad. So it's not like she screwed him over. Mm -hmm. And plus with him, he's a farmer. So he was there and he fed the animals. He knew that people wouldn't be there. He was local. So there was like quite a lot of things that did actually you know, but also shock can play a big factor, doesn't it? So when some, because you always hear about how like, look, you know, they pay attention to people, but sometimes you don't know how you're going to react. Right. We all think we're going to go scream into the hills, but it doesn't mean you will. But it doesn't yeah. mean you're guilty if you don't. And he knew how to feed, not that it's complicated to feed animals. I'm sure the feed is right near the animals. <laughs> but if that was something that he did and he was just like, keep on keeping on, I'm just going to, Keep feeding the animals. But it's a strange here. thing to do, isn't it? Very strange. You think you'd want to get the hell out of there? You would you think. Just murdered a load of people. So yeah. So he was obviously a big factor in it, but they just couldn't pin him on anything. Um, like the is was it Golden State Killer that always made himself a sandwich? 
I was like, hey, <laughs> I, I think he like I don't know if that was when he like murdered people or if it was just raping them, but he would I think like tie them up or something and then he would go down and raid their fridge and literally like make himself something to eat. Why they were upstairs. Him. Yeah. Were they were they alive or dead when he did that? <laughs> I can't remember. I think like alive. He's like, don't make a noise. Or I think honestly. I can remember that he would like stack dishes on them or something. And that way, if they moved, he could hear it and something crazy like that. But he would totally go make himself a sandwich. Pretty sure it was Golden State Killer. <laughs> going to have to look that up and people are going to call me out on YouTube and be like, you're wrong. It's so-and-so. But someone did that. <laughs> oh, my God. People are, they're weird. <laughs> yeah, very. <laughs> Just gonna that was like his signature. <laughs> sandwich time <laughs> it's disgusting um yeah i don't get why they stayed but you know I, I guess we never will know another um suspect was victoria's husband now he of course was killed but they um they'd never find a body so they wondered did he actually die and come back and do it but the soldiers that served with him apparently did confirm that they had saw him die and the police were happy with this and they decided to oh, drop it. Oh, that died at war. Yeah. Okay. I was like, yeah. what do you mean they didn't find a body? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. So they, the case was then basically dead in the water. They did do this really weird thing though, where they closed the case and then they, they, they took off their heads and sent them to be examined for clues just um, the heads. Yeah. And of course, because clairvoyance thought that the heads would like speak to them and tell them <laughs> th this is apparently what okay. happened. I mean, this is, I think the problem is with a case like this, it's from a hundred years ago. Yeah. You know, and they didn't. But I don't get think to... the soul stays in the brain. Yeah. Yeah. Postmortem, but... Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> they thought that they would get some clues. Um, but no, but not that I know what happens mm. postmortem. I, no. I have no idea, but that's probably not it. <laughs> I don't, I don't think it's it either. And I know that, I mean, I know in even later cases, you do get people that talk to, you know, psychics and all this kind of stuff. But back then it was probably more of a thing. You'd have all these kind of right. people coming out of the woodworks. Um, but so they had, they had obviously no suspects or anything like that. Heads have been taken off they checked them you know the Talk to call them. It, the clairvoyance strangely enough couldn't find any Inter interviewed them <laughs> but in 2007 so I was getting excited here because I thought oh, 2007 we're going to hear something a group of students from a police academy in Furstenfeldbruck decide, okay. <laughs> decided <laughs> to examine the case themselves because they wanted to see could they come up with um you know, a, a suspect and, but obviously the original case didn't have a lot of evidence because I don't think, I don't think Dexter was around at that time to get, get some, some forensic. Right. Um, and also another big thing, 1922 in 2007, the chances of people being alive that would remember it was, you know, there wasn't anyone basically. So they did actually come up with a name of someone that they thought was responsible, but I cannot give you that name because they decided not to release it out of oh. respect for the relatives because, well, which I agree okay. with. Yes, but having said that, can they tell us how, why they think it's that person? <laughs> they, no, they just, they just looked at all the stuff that was there, all the evidence and stuff like that. And then they just hmm. decided, you know, they obviously come up with something, but it might, I don't know, because it, it's the kind of thing that you think would be almost a drifter. But then at the same time, you know, knowing, like living in the place for so long, but then a drifter would live in the place because it's somewhere to live. Yeah. You know, so people might not know who he is, but if it's someone they think's local, then I suppose that's just maybe a process of elimination and kind of going through who mm. lived there at the time and stuff like that. But it's not, I don't think you could be a hundred percent sure enough to go up to a family and go, Oh, by the way, we think your great, great granddad did this. Yeah. Or great, great grandma did this. Cause you know, women kill too. Um, <laughs> they sure do. 
exactly so <clears throat> obviously the name didn't come out and you know they spoke more about how there was somebody living in this attic and they think you were there for six months feces newspapers and all that so maybe there was a date on it um and so someone they think someone had maybe been living in the attic mm. prior six to this. months six so months. maybe whoever was in the attic did it but we don't know no no <sighs> i i think i don't think it was the Lorenz I don't think it was him I think it was whoever because both Andreas who like the maid was saying it but Andreas lived there you know obviously 24 7 and he also went on about how he had heard noises and the various things going on like the the footprints in the snow and stuff like that so there could have been someone there could have been someone on site do you think the family (laughs) someone in the family was secretly letting someone live up there or like just like a drifter snuck in and look at this empty space I'm gonna inhabit it I think someone just went up there because there was I can't remember who the case was but there was a case in it was in the states where somebody was living not for six months but somebody had been staying in someone's attic and then when the family was asleep they went down and killed them creepy so i wonder if there's any other entry to the attic other than through the house because if it was six months day in and day out of you like (laughs) sneaking out not getting caught that sounds kind of well i got the impression that it wasn't like like what you'd have today like that you'd have to go through the house and up through a Mm -hmm. you know a thing in the ceiling and stuff to get there i'd say it was I don't know. It didn't sound like the most like sheltered roof. So maybe, I don't know, maybe there was just access. And, like, and if it was completely open, yeah. then it's I know, easier I'm picturing to kind of get like through. a barn loft almost. Like maybe they could yeah. just put a ladder up and do, do, do. Yeah, that's kind I of how know. I think. Yeah, that's kind of how I think. But interesting. Yeah. But what would make them want to pickaxe <laughs> all these people? And then just leave because it's not like they could take over the farm. Although he tried for a couple of days, maybe he didn't like it. No, um, this isn't for me. I don't. I don't know because, like, why do why do a lot of them do it? You know, it's it's just well, usually it's, there's some reason for for a lot of people. I mean, sometimes it, there's random killings, but an entire family. I don't know. Yeah, usually and there's no some one... personal stuff there. I think it's something I think personally it's probably but then it makes no sense to kill the whole family like if he was if Andreas was the guy he was it makes no sense to kill everyone I could understand if they killed him but why why kill the the kids yeah you know and again strange isn't he the one that had his face clawed up Mm. why would you do that to yourself (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, but they did. Um, they actually knocked the house down the f- the, a year later in 1923. Uh, oh, and so there goes all the evidence. Yeah. And the family <clears throat> is obviously was buried without their heads and their heads have since been lost. Oh, they in, just. Yeah, they were know, lost during World War Two. Disappeared and never returned. They obviously got lost in transit going over yeah wow interesting so there's no conclusion (laughs) you're welcome (laughs) yeah (laughs) have fun guys let us know what you think oh my gosh yeah I have no idea like I wish I had more a a lineup of suspects to choose from but yeah there wasn't really much to it no I just thought it was an interesting story because I mean it's a really old one but I just thought it was an interesting one because it's I think sometimes when there's not much there it's better because it does make you think whereas when you get given everything you don't have to think about it in detail because the details have been given to you yeah whereas with case it's like you know you you will think about who did it you know there's people still probably trying to figure out who did it like you know the ones that get involved in these unsolved things but yeah, sure. I just thought it was an interesting one. Did you jump on Reddit to see if there was I any don't rabbit touch holes? Reddit. 
you don't I, <laughs> for an unsolved one I would probably get on just to see oh, I hate some Reddit. like random that place theories. is a cesspit of vileness oh <laughs> awful my husband's always on it and I just yeah I, I don't get it. on it either and my husband has an account I think I have an account I, I do well, I don't really I just no. get on it but maybe mm-hmm. for something like this I think I may have jumped on for that one I did Oh, I, it's hard to pronounce too. Like the hikers went up in the uh, Russian mountains and oh, okay. died in like really weird ways. They had like mm. their tongues missing mm. and stuff. I think I got on there just to see all the weird theories that people come up with. But I'm not a fan of sites with loads and loads and loads of comments. Yeah. Because you see I mean, the crazy in people there. It's and, true. And You're the, not reading the anger. articles. You're reading comments. Yeah, the anger and the stupidity. The stupidity. People get really angry. I'm just like yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, <laughs> she just said hi. <laughs> so yeah, no, chill I, pill. Yeah, I tried Reddit, but I just no, not for me. Yeah. I can't. It's too much. It's too much. But yeah, that is my um, my little unsolved murder of the Hintrakefect murders. Hintrakefect. Hintrakefect. Okay. Gotcha. I know, I know you messaged it to me and it was like I didn't <laughs> obtain I anyone I say it to they're like the what yeah oh, yeah and that Apparently, was their last names or no, that was the, the, the it where was it happened K-fect. okay the farm was hinter kfect but apparently hinter means behind okay and kfect is the town apparently but you know gotcha. someone may be able to tell me different but um yeah so yeah, there's not really much to it. Still interesting. I do like the old ones. It is just a bummer that you don't have as much information as you do with the new ones. Yeah, there wasn't there wasn't much out there. I mean, I'm there. There might be a bit more that I missed, but in general, there wasn't. It was kind of yeah. the same kind of story on everything that I read. You know. So you said there were two that weren't taken to the barn, yeah. right? Yeah, <clears throat> and they were found in the home. Yeah, because it was the baby and the maid. The baby and the maid. When I watched... So who, this person just like lived in the house with a dead baby and a dead maid. Yeah, because when I days. watched the film, from what I remember, the little bit I did watch, it almost looked like the maid walked in on the person. Mm. You know? Hi, um, I'm here for work. Yeah, exactly. It looks like they just kind of like got in the... And she was definitely someone who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, she's not part of the family. She just happened to work there that day. Um, but I think she basically just walked into them. And because I think when I watched the film, I think she was like killed in the kitchen or something. So I think I think because I only watched it briefly. I was like, no, yeah. after the, after the dad scene, which was really quite graphic, it grossed me out too much. And I was like, yeah, no. especially because it was how old was the girl? Yeah, she was really when that was happening. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Not that I want to watch it at any age, but especially when mm. I think about the child actor too. Like, I, so I doesn't did that well. kind of like psychologically mess she, you she, up? Just not that even... this makes it better. She was a woman. She was a like she looked like she was a grown up in it, like okay. she was in her twenties type thing. Not that that makes it any better. I know it's it's harder when it's a child, but yeah, I was thinking of the actress when I was watching. I was like, oh, because it's so he's so disgusting in it and the way he gropes her and it's like it's just vile it's just it's it's one of the most disgusting things you can see it's just vile you know and I just thought I did I I think of her acting that out I do that way when I watch films where there's that kind of scene in it you do kind of think oh my god that must be Mm -hmm. really hard and how does the guy kind of like deal with that as in look I'm really sorry but I've got to do this now and all this kind of stuff like you know it's kind of really difficult but yeah yeah. Oh. So are you going to be keeping up with Once Upon a Nightmare and doing this new one? Or are you going to yeah. switch it? I haven't really like chatted with you much about it to see. So you're going to try to do both. Are you going to do weekly? No, I'm going to, I'm just, I'm going to not going to do weekly on the nightmare one, but I'm going to do just fun ones because they're, I, I enjoy doing like the your fun shark ones. films. Yeah, because I think the problem <laughs> was I kind of screwed myself over if I'm completely honest with you. I did the I wanted to do the true crime element of films but when I was doing them I was like wanted to do more of the true crime stuff but I couldn't 
as much as I wanted to because of the film. So I, I kind of realized how much I wanted to. But then I did like an episode on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the, you know, the shark films. that, And I really enjoyed that because it's just a bit of fun. So yeah, I thought it is. I can use that for a bit of fun. And then I can get my heart through crime fix by doing yeah. my other thing, you know. So mm-hmm. and I, I find it easier, funny enough, to sit down and write a true crime episode because I'm really you like think? engaged. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wrote like this. I wrote really quick, quite quickly. And the three I did over the week, I found it's not always going to be the case, right? Because I do know how it, it, it definitely de- depends yeah. on how much information there is. Sometimes there's so much information that you think, oh, this is going to be easy. There's so much information, but then you have to go through all that information, and it takes a really long time. Well, like when nothing. I did, when there's I did nothing. Jonestown, oh, Jonestown, no. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what which information to choose to put into this I could have done multiple episodes but I I was when when you said you were doing Jonestown because like I've I know a bit about it but like I the thought of doing an episode on that because there's so much out there Mm -hmm. but it's like uh, the first episode I'm doing on is a guy called Larry Eiler and I was like so got loads of information on him and then I like to look at a few different sources you know just to see do they all match up oh god no right I know sometimes you have they're all to completely just, different. Yeah, you have to just kind of like, but you have to almost decide which one to believe, you know? Sometimes you choose the one that sounds like, oh, that one sounds more interesting. I'll go with that one. You don't know which one's right or wrong. And then you get yelled at and it's like, listen, here's the source I use. Sorry, I don't, I wasn't there. I don't know what really. Happened. I know. And the thing is as well, you're, you're, you're listening to a version from a serial killer because they're full of truth. But yeah, no, right. I, I think if people want to yell, then let them yell. I'm not going to take the blind yeah. bit notes. Oh, them. I know. But, um, yeah, that, so it is a bit frustrating and stuff like that. And like with this case that we just talked about it, there was very little information about I'm it. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch Jonestown. I wouldn't. I was, you did a really good fun, episode, though. by the way. No, you did a really good episode, but I, I was yeah. like, oh God, she's taking on a big in there. <laughs> I do want to do Heaven's Gate too. I really do like the cult stuff. It's I find it fascinating. But yeah. that one, I listened to one recently where they covered it. It was like a three-parter on a podcast. Mm. It was very interesting. They were very detailed in it. Yeah, but they have so. writers. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. It's, Those it's, people it's, are just like, I'm here for work. And they just read what was written for them. It must yeah, be so exactly, nice. Exactly. <laughs> but um yeah no some of them are um I'd love to hear someone because I find this the whole topic and I apologize if any of your listeners are of this way but um Scientology I just yeah I love it last podcast on the left do like five episodes of Scientology and I swear I never laugh so much in my life (laughs) I swear to god it's just brilliant it's just so funny I'm sorry yeah Scientologist but no um, but yeah, mm, I am definitely not <sighs> hit, hit that. Do that one. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be working on yeah. that. There's no murder, oh, in it, but you'll be working on I it know. for, um, for, for months. But yeah, but yeah, there is a lie there. It's a lot of brainwashing in, mm. uh, in religion in general. Sorry for that, but not sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not religious. So it's fine. <laughs> Not at all. (laughs) Oh, okay. So we said, continuing with both, why don't you tell us where we can find Once Upon a Nightmare and then again with your American murder stories? Okay. So uh, Once Upon a Nightmare is on Twitter as a nightmare pod and Once Upon a Nightmare on everything else. And Instagram is Once Upon a Nightmare podcast, but, you know, Apple and all that kind of stuff. And American murder stories is... Murder. You gotta learn. Sto- you gotta learn the name of your podcast. <laughs> I get everyone's wrong. I get everyone's yeah, wrong. If you struggle with killer stories for a long time, I was but... on once. Uh, we're distractions, and she called me once upon a time. Yeah. <laughs> ah. so, yeah. Exactly. Hey. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Murder story. American murder stories is on Twitter as American underscore murder, and then on Instagram American murder stories, and then it just be that on when it comes out mm-hmm. on May fourth. American murder stories yeah but I'm uh it's it's it's, uh it's gonna be I don't know never how to say it's gonna be fun but no it will be it will be loads of fun and I'm gonna have on it 
Yeah, I'm going to have you on and obviously Stuart on and kind of steal your idea for <laughs> your British killer murder story. I know. So, so, so we were supposed to call this one Once Upon a Killer Story, mm. merging Once Upon a Nightmare and Killer Stories. But yeah. You can still do that. You can still do that. I, I did it. I'm going to put it at the top. That's what yeah. it's going to be. Exactly. Exactly. So, cool. uh, yeah. So I'll have you on to do that when I don't feel like doing one for the week. <laughs> right. It's Bobby. I need a favor. Get right in. <laughs> it was nice because again, I skipped last week and then my mom is here and I was like, I don't have to write this week either because Lorraine's telling the story. It was great. Yeah. It's Back nice. to the drawing board. I don't know what I'm doing yet next week because I'm, you know, that last minute, but yeah, I'll figure same. it out. Yeah, exactly. I'll figure it out. And thank you all for listening. Thank you for coming on. And I usually do a little sign off. Um, <laughs> do you want to do it? Sue, do, Sue does, uh, he says, what's he say? He says, cheerio. Some, cheerio. <laughs> and I say, until next time, this has been a killer story. You're going to have some cool sign off for your. <laughs> I'll have to think of something cool, but yeah, you know. Think of something. Think yeah. of something. All right. Well, until next time. Okay, this has bye. Been a killer story. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>